Does Tic Tac steal my Wi-Fi? I think my bill's going up. Uh, yes. Always. Oh, okay. Then we should definitely ban that, that website. Yeah. I, I agree, Mr. Senator. Thank you, Mr. Uh, J- Jibriles. Thank, thank you, sir. Close enough. Thank you. enough that was not close at all for me my mic does my mic doesn't pick up my claps maybe twerk yeah, harder the no- also, noise it, the noise it, suppression it, it, it's literally just for me to, to to line up later no i know i know it's a it's not if it was if it was in sync that would be incredible and that would be really weird well maybe, it's because it's well i mean it's just because uh you don't know if i actually did it or not until you actually get the recording yeah that's true okay uh, Jabril, do you have any questions before we get started? Uh, yeah. Why are women? Hmm. Why are women? Yeah. I think it's pronounced whammon. Actually, that- Not today. Whoa, that, Man. That's one of the bones I have to pick with Jabril's later. Women. Hmm. You have- you, Alright, we gotta- We you gotta, gotta pick a woman bone with me? To- yep. I got a lot of bones to pick with you and right. women. Oh, oh, and women. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. That makes more sense. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's, let's, um, all right. Trust and take our guest. Why do you do can this take- every week? <laughs> can I do, can I do the intro? Please. Hey, it better be good. Listen, oh, I'm judging. Yeah, I'm judging. This better be a good intro, all right? Okay. Okay. Go ahead and be very stable and diffuse oh. us an intro. AI Ooh. humor now, huh? That's where we're at in 2023, huh? All right, all right, hey. all right, all right, Here we go, here we go. Hello and welcome to the first podcast. I'm Tej and, and, pe- and I'm joined <laughs> as always. Oh, sh- shut up. Hello and welcome to the first podcast. Hey everybody, welcome you, back you to an another intro? episode. We got Jabril's here. <laughs> wow. uh, Jabril, say Yo. hi. That was Yo, the what's up? I- I'm Jabril's. <laughs> welcome to the first podcast. Oh, We're live. I'm Tej <laughs> and I'm joined as always by my co-host Lars Vanoid Spaghetto. Today we have a very special guest with us, Jabril. A prominent hey guys, computer science back YouTuber to who specializes podcast. in artificial um, intelligence. Really happy to be in this to episode, Jabril's. we'll be exploring the vast, I, exciting you know, world of AI, I think discussing the latest nice breakthroughs, the challenges facing cute. researchers, and the ethical considerations surrounding this rapidly evolving technology. So, whether you're an AI enthusiast or just curious about the future of technology, join us as we deep dive into the fascinating world of artificial intelligence on the first podcast. Yeah, that there. was Chat G- GPT, 100%. Yeah, that. That was the gimmick yep. I was doing. It spelled my name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just said Jabril. I put Jabril's, but I just said Jabril. Okay. The silent uh, S. Listen, listen. Okay, yeah. it's time for me to grade your intro, okay? For some okay. reason, I'm compelled to give it a perfect 12 out of 10. I don't know why. It was AI generated. <laughs> oh, did it really? Hmm. Because you said your name a lot. I, I literally just asked Jet GPT to make an intro for me. Oh well. Hey. Yeah. Was this was this uh three point five or four by the way, DJ? Uh, it is with the March twenty third version. Was it okay or was it really like disturbingly good? Oh, oh, okay. You has to be to rate it. Listen, 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 no. listen, no. listen, listen. No. I got this, Lars. If you ask someone which okay. version it, version it is, they don't know. It's three point five. That. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah. That's actually yeah. That's actually true. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, for for anyone who's tuning into this and doesn't understand kind of the context, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll explain it for for people because 
uh, right now we're kind of experiencing a renaissance and a revolution in the, the tech industry that it's moving probably faster than it ever has because, and this is where I'm going to get into the, uh, the bone picking juice with, yeah. the Hills which is that on your last appearance on the podcast, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, my co-host uh, Madison ended up asking you a lot of questions about things like, Oh, Hey, could you use AI in the future to do this? Ooh. Would you be able to make a movie with your favorite actor? Like, let's say I'm a fledgling producer slash director, and I have access to the software that borrows Johnny Depp's, you know, acting, but I don't want to hire Johnny Depp. I just use the software. Funny enough, that's already a thing. You know, make like a sound clip or something, or could you use AI to uh, make a game or something? And then you kept saying, yeah, yeah, that's all going to be possible. That's all going to be a thing. And I remember thinking to myself that I don't think this guy is lying, <laughs> but I do feel like it's, I was kind of s- skeptical, kind of in the same way that, you know, they keep saying, oh yeah, uh, male birth control is coming in the next five years for <laughs> sure. You know, right. But then all of it came true. Every single thing you ever said <laughs> in that episode is now a thing. And it is all rapidly expanding, and by the next week, it's all going to be completely out of date because all the standards will have evolved completely, and it's I'm insane. Gonna... You're you're like Nostra fucking. I I don't I don't understand how you called it so correctly, but you were right. And uh, if you want to take a victory lap, you are more than welcome to. Thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome to the future, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Um, I I don't remember everything that I said in the last cast. Hopefully, when I rewatch this, uh, sure. I'll have my official victory lap then but um mm-hmm. yeah i don't know i think that in terms of this technology like <clears throat> it was always possible to imagine what it would look like yeah. it was just a matter of like having the manpower to to make it happen and uh once you get all the big players in the yeah. game google microsoft etc etc i think just accelerated rapidly yeah i want to i want to point something out which i had a, a thought about the other day by the way which is that If you think about this tech, it kind of seems like on the surface, it's something that we probably, you think we would have started doing a lot sooner, but I I looked into it and apparently it's like 2014, very early proto beginnings, like 2018, they're starting to barely synthesize pictures of cows, Mm -hmm. like barely. Mm -hmm. And this is like a really recent thing. And, um, I, uh, how familiar are you with the, the, the various, um, I guess I'll, for for the sake of simplicity, software packages are you at the moment? Software package. What is this? Yeah, just like yeah, I, just like web apps and stuff. Like your Chat GPTs, your Stable Diffusions, your Mid oh, that kind of stuff. I'd say I'm, I'm pretty versed on most of them. Okay, uh, TJ and Spaghetto, are you as well? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm pretty uh, versed on them. I'm gonna be honest with you, Chief. Okay. I'm not gonna know until we start talking about it because I've had so many head injuries that information kind of floats around in my brain like soup. AI. What's the A stand for? Artificial. What's the I? Uh, Intelligence. Oh. What was the A again? Let's move on. Should get yeah. that. Should well, get, should should get that checked what? out, my friend. That's actually yeah. a plan later this week. I have a neurology exam. Oh, tight. Yeah, I respect that. Also, sorry for dipping for a minute, Lars. My cat yeah. knocked the Brita filter off the counter, and it fell and hit the dog, and I thought something, like, really bad happened because the dog, like, screamed, and I'm, I hope I hope that didn't catch in the recording. Oh, shit. <laughs> wait, wait. What's the dog doing? Uh, the dog yeah, is really dog pissed right now. Doing? Fair enough. Yeah, but Spaghetto, he, he said a meme. <laughs> what's the <laughs> dog doing? <laughs> No, but here's the thing, Spaghetto, I, I like it when your animals just cause chaos. Like, the, yeah. the very first time you, you came back on the show, your cat literally started mauling you oh, that, loudly that's, for, like, That's funny, two because minutes. that's not my cat. That's yeah. my friend's cat, Oh, and she came over, and she was, was biting sh- my wires, and up. I picked her up, and I'm like, stop biting my wires. And then she started just gnawing the shit out of me, and I started screaming, and she started screaming, all while TJ was talking about Andrew Tate. Yeah. It was really funny because he was trying to explain like this thing where someone was mimicking uh, uh, voices like Andrew Tate and Amaranth and, and stuff, I think. 
was it, DJ? I was uh, trying to explain uh, a Twitch streamer that was using AI to have fake interviews with famous people and uh, you, mm-hmm. like YouTube personalities. Yeah, and you talking about and Andrew Tate got my TikTok flag. Yeah, because well, he's banned on TikTok. Just mentioning his name, just at all. Their yeah. their uh their AI algorithm uh will know when you say Andrew Tate, and it it does, and it will yeah. flag you for doing that that's actually a good circle back and to i kind of get it because they kind of spam his content i don't know um J- jabril would you mind giving like a kind of a 30 second summary of like where things are at at the moment just kind of like for your context uh sure you ready here it is okay. <clears throat> yes oh my god oh my god what the hell oh my god what no way there you have it yeah <laughs> that's it's accurate yeah okay so I'll, I'll kind of expand on it a little bit, though, which is that um, recently the 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 whole idea of generating a, a realistic image and as of like a month ago, a realistic video um, to the point where it's like Turing complete in some cases. And like uh, you can you can like do things like uh, I use it to fool a game developer or something <laughs> on your YouTube channel. True. Uh, for example. True. And uh, it's getting okay. I'll, I, I've said this before on the show, but if you're if you're someone who's listening to this and your concept of artificial intelligence is that you remember about six months ago, you saw something on Dolly, which was kind of funny because it could make like make a little mm. like uh, meme pictures and it's like, oh, I'm going to have a picture of like uh, like Barney killing Hitler or something. <laughs> And, and it would generate like a bunch of them and it looked vaguely uh, like that. But yeah. That's it. Things have yep. progressed. Just Why was right that schedule? your example? What the fuck? I think it was an apt example. Well, cause all I remember yeah, like I six just, months yeah, just, ago was like all those weird, like celebrity pictures of them singing like the song from Yakuza. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 It was like this really creepy thing where like their mouth would move and they would be like mouthing the lyrics to some song. And then people used it to say slurs, and I'm like, oh, there it is. Yeah. Good old internet. I feel, I feel like, by the way, Tristan, that, that, okay, so Barney is probably the most wholesome, like, thing I can think of mm-hmm. off the top of my head. So him killing the least. Well, Lars, you don't have to explain that's... yourself. It was, a, it was a fantastic. You know what? Hold up. Hold up. I'm pulling, I, I'm Thank Googling you. this Thank shit. Thank you. It was fantastic. Um, but yeah, 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 one hundred percent. I think that uh, what you're saying exactly right. Like the technology is just accelerating so fast. In fact, I think just a couple of days ago, I might be wrong about this. I I think the models have like almost solved the hands problem. Uh, there was an update to uh, Mid Journey. Yes, um, that yeah. So there's something uh, there's something called Control Net. Are you aware of what that is? I am not. Educate me. Okay, so control net is this new thing where you can specify things uh, such as a depth map and a, an open pose. And what that basically does is that if you are going to go ahead and generate a uh, picture of someone or something or just anything you want, you can specify that you would like it to denoise in a very specific form. Uh, based on the depth of another photo that you have, like an actual one, or based on uh, a specific pose, like literally, you can you can take another photo, and you can feed it the pose in that photo, and the AI can guess what that pose is and recreate it perfectly, and you can use a depth map on the hands, so that the hands look perfect. So we're screwed as a species. What is this called? You said it's what is it? It's called Control Net, and it is it is glorious and it is very concerning because that that issue is gone at this point. Because what the, the the funny meme is like, well, I don't what do I do with my hands? Because I have like eighty fingers on them, but that's not. I mean, mean, but at this point, are you really surprised? I mean, like the cat's already out the bag, you know. We're just gonna oh. slowly iterate on yeah. every last little thing that you enjoy until you no longer enjoy because AI can do it, you know. That actually yeah. it makes me want to oh, ask this question because we kind of led into this topic. With AI photo technology, do you feel like it'll be a detriment to artists, Brill? I do not think so. So I'm actually working on publishing a, a manga series, uh, and I don't know how to draw. However, 
uh, with the help of like Mid Journey and Dolly and, and such and such, I've been able to get a better capture of like my vision by just sitting there and generating a bunch of prompts and they'll spit out like different designs. And then I feed those to actual artists. Yeah. Like I pay actual artists to say like, Hey, I need to refine this. Um, and so like artists are still a really yeah. essential part of like my pipeline for making the manga at the moment. Um, I can't imagine a world where like, you know, I, the, the AI can induce the intention that I want, but I, I don't think it will happen for a while. Um, there's just too much noise. Uh, so mm-hmm. yeah, that that last leg of like I really need to put this intention into the art. Like I need an artist to do that. That's really mm-hmm. that's a really interesting modern process when it comes to creating a story because just even a few years ago that wasn't even possible, and now you're having artificial intelligence help you create your own vision, and that's just that's phenomenal. In Listen, technology. I'll tell you. So, like, I started making this uh, manga series in like 2020, like before a lot of this AI image generation really popped off. And like, so I, I've been through like the evolution of this thing. And I'll tell you, the most expensive part of making this series was the concepting. Like, I had a vision in my head. I didn't know how to draw it, so I had to pay one, two, three, four, five different artists so they can help me figure out this vision. Some were bad. Some were good. Some were okay. I only found someone go like it was really expensive, but now with AI I'm just like, hey, here's what I'm thinking. I want it in the style of like Capcom or style of Marvel, something like that. And it gives me like a, a close enough vision. Mm-hmm. And I take an artist and say, this is what I'm thinking. Can you change a couple of things here and there? And they spit it out and like it's much, much faster. So it's definitely made the process a lot cheaper for me at this moment. I, I don't see it replacing intention for a while, but eventually it might. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I actually kind of um, I I had a an observation about that specifically, which I felt is kind of going to be going to be the case for at least quite a while at this point. Which is that um, whenever I I, I see uh, generated art, especially the stuff that kind of comes out on Mid Journey, which is kind of just really geared towards like human biases of just kind of generically good digital art. It rarely flags above a seven or below a seven in terms of like actual quality. And it, it, it reminds me, it feels like someone who has read a cookbook for a long time and never mm-hmm. really cooked, but mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're confident that they could give it a shot. And that's the kind of stuff that's coming out of it. Um, but as a counterpoint to myself, I'm going to go ahead and po- uh, post something in the chat, by the way, um, to show that, yeah, you, the, the, I'll post this in the the YouTube video, by the way. Um, uh, This is something I generated the other day. Uh, You can just have hands that look like normal hands now. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's that's a a thing of the past. So, uh, yeah. Well, in its uh, in its current state, the AI can't think or uh, imagine Bro. things. Well, that's what how the hell does she move (laughs) in that dress? Do you see her belly button? Well, I mean, Mm -hmm. it needs. It needs human assistance still. It still needs input from humans. It needs to learn off of humans. Yeah. And then it just uh it just approximates what it thinks a human would want, mm-hmm. but it doesn't it doesn't make creative decisions on its own. That is only because we're not we're not we're not at the point where the AI is on human level intelligence yet. Like people seem to think like, oh, we're close to the, the AI becoming aware and then we have like real life Skynet and then it destroys us all. We're not, we don't even have the human brain fully mapped out. We don't even really know how the human brain fully works. Yeah. So until we get to that point, it, it's, um, it's still going to need real, hu- we're still going to need real human artists, uh, working on the art. I don't art, know if I agree with that. Basically. Uh, the, specifically the line of like, yeah. it hasn't reached human level intelligence. I don't know if I agree with that. Well, I don't uh, explain. Uh, yeah, go okay. ahead. Um, so like to your point of like, we don't even have the human mind mapped out, right? I could argue that mm-hmm. because we don't, how do you really know like, like where AI is at with intelligence? You know, you take any That's single true. individual human and like, they're not versed in everything. You know, they have specializations and that's currently what we have with mm-hmm. models. You know, you have like the Dolly model that specialize in generating art. It can take photos, if you will. Uh, you have the chat GPT model, which is specialized in like language to some degree. Um, and there's other models that specialize mm-hmm. in other things. And 
I would ask, like, is this no different than like taking a room full of experts that specialize in individual things? Like, does the mm-hmm. AI have to know everything that every human uh, combined can do for it to be considered intelligent? Yeah. Well, um, the the concept that I'm kind of explaining here is the difference between narrow AI and general AI. And narrow AI is what we currently have, which is you train it on something very specific and it's very good on that one specific thing. Like a like an AI trained to play chess. It only knows how to play chess. It can't conceptualize anything else. It seems but then, like you're describing like just a person that has a very yeah. sharpened skill. Yeah, I guess so. But uh, it, with uh, general AI, then then it can just uh, that's how that would be on the level of, of it being able to learn and uh, conceptualize things like a human. But do you think basically? Do you think that? Maybe our definition of that doesn't really need to apply because it's it's a different you mm-hmm. know AI is a different kind of thing. Does it? I, I don't know. Do we need to think of it in terms of how it matches us or because it, it's it's doing something different? Like you said, it, it's 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 trying to approximate what it thinks that we want. Uh, but it's a not- lot of it is a lot of it is based off of how humans learn mm-hmm. and imitate things we know with things like neural nets it's imitating neurons from what i gather from the you know you know the act with the term at least of what is. we know of neurons right um mm-hmm. uh so we can only approximate i think like the the only brain that we've fully mapped out at this point is like i remember reading about that they mapped out the brain of the larva of a fruit fly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh which is not nearly as many neurons as an entire human brain. I think we've partially mapped out a rat's brain, but um, that's still impressive. That I mean, that's it is. You could, but uh, but like I said, with with like what I said with the example of the chess computer, it just it only knows how to play chess. It doesn't. It can't conceptualize sure, anything but, else. But yeah. here's my argument, right? Is that like when it comes to digital intelligence, right? It's it's it, it's different than mm-hmm. our. Uh, meat intelligence. I don't know what we call it officially. Um, meat intelligence. Digital intelligence. <laughs> That's a good term. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Digital intelligence <laughs> has a huge advantage that we don't have, which is it can connect to the internet. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. What stops a chest AI mm-hmm. connecting with a Dolly AI, connecting with a Chat GPT, connecting with you know all the way down the line to create one hive mind Skynet mm-hmm. general intelligence like. Well, you're describing the the Internet of Things, and I mean, that's that's a that's a positive thing. I would I would actually I would love if I would really like right now if my Alexa could could give me Chat GP, GPT related answers instead of just kind of the dumb answers that it gives. I, I, that's probably a good thing. Um, well, things like like Chat GPT, it's it's not coming up with new answers. It's just taking things that it learned from its data set yeah, and just mashing yeah, them together. I mean, but, wait, hold on, hold on, no, TJ. I get that. But the, that's exactly what humans do. Though. Yeah, Didn't you go exactly. to college from what we learn. Yeah, it's just textbooks. Yeah, yeah. Like, TJ, did you go to college? Did you get a four-year degree? <laughs> but my point is, like, AI is just in like the preschool stage of learning how to assert itself, and mm-hmm. as time passes, it could even surpass us intellectually because it's studying all the time. And it doesn't have to sleep. It doesn't have limits. It doesn't have like mm-hmm. constraints like we do. It has infinite amount of like knowledge and anything it can absorb in just a second. Whereas we have to like study and try and retain things. And then we kind of have like our own set, like special skill or career. Whereas AI could just do anything. But I still think, man, that it, it's I, I kind of when I reiterate what I was saying earlier that I still think that since it's designed to give us kind of it's programmed to give us what we want as opposed to like an actual imperfect intelligence behind it and well that's good for what it does it's it's not what constitutes a 10 out of 10 piece of art for me like well that's what i'm saying it's not making the decisions on its own yeah but well that's what i'm saying too like it's it's learning not just that though but just even on on like a conceptual level there's a lack of grit to it that just I don't I've never seen a, a piece of AI art so far and I'm someone who has dabbled in a hell of a lot of it so far um that I think wow you know what that's like 
that's really artistically interesting because it, it it's mm-hmm. designed to be aesthetically pleasing and they actually have like the the the, the database specifically to flag pictures above 4.5 on the on the scale for that on purpose but that doesn't make like amazing art it just makes stuff that's pretty good and that's very pleasant to look at so i think that serves a different role i think um because i I was actually watching a lot of uh videos about this um the argument because i'm I'm kind of uh, presenting sort of like a sort of the other end of the argument where I'm, i'm being a little bit critical about yeah, it's not necessarily like what what I think. Wait, critical is that a reference to the hit YouTuber Moist Critical, also known as Charlie slash Penguin Zero? Hey yo, hey, bounce. I yeah, I, I, I can't, I I can't get away with the references, but you guys can. <laughs> well, no, he didn't get away hey, with any of that. That was really fast. We're gonna speak. talk Let about yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk spit, about AI. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Let him cook. an Wars. example that that I saw was brought up is basically. AI is only good as the data set that you train it on, That's true. but it can't it can't conceptualize new things outside of it. And an example of that would be if I were to bring back, well, actually, not necessarily chess, but the um, the AI that that they train to play Go, uh, if you know what Go is, yeah, mm-hmm. and um, it, it it's trained on a data set of all the best Go players uh, in history that they could. Put oh. in, and it learned all of the techniques uh, by all Go players, and um, you know it's able to beat world champions and things like that. But there was one yeah. Go player that it went up against, where uh, the player decided to do the most unconventional, stupidest move, stupid, the stupidest strategy possible that he could think of for Go that the the AI didn't know how to counter. Uh, and that's basically like an example of, uh, you could basically fool an AI if it doesn't, it doesn't know if you, if you become unpredictable is what I'm saying. Well, that's what I was saying, man. It's, it's, it's not, and it's not just fooling them. It's, it's just that there's, there's something to the human imperfection. Wait a second, wait a second, mm-hmm. wait a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Didn't what you just explained, did you just explain like 99% of the human population? I think you're being a bit too charitable to humans. Like if you present a new scenario to a human, like they're going to react the same way. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. like the AI is just a reflection of like our biases. Right. Yeah. In a way. I know. I'm just, I I think I'm going to have to side with Jabril's here because it just seems like AI is Mm -hmm. in a way, just a type of humanity captured in technology, but minus the creativity. I think all three of you are completely wrong. I I, I think, I think AI is just something different entirely. I I just, I don't think it exists on the same. I think they're, comparisons to well make, but what what they're bringing up is how because we make ai the ai reflects our biases that we put into the data set and it could be mm-hmm. incidental like we didn't purposely do it because there's been problems with um ai that's made to detect faces yeah. and scan faces but they didn't put enough it had it had a problem with detecting faces of people with darker skin that's because true. they didn't put a lot of uh, people with darker skin in the data set they only put a bunch of white guys in it yeah although it's funny so because th- now that's that is also a kind of that a, happen that's also kind of a thing of the past though because like in the last few weeks or months yeah. that they've released a whole new model called open clip and it, that that led to stable diffusion 2.0 and 2.1 and and mm-hmm. that is a radically different product which a lot of people were upset they kind of went the other way which they they took a lot of the, the fun stuff out of it and uh that, that's actually an interesting discussion. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pose this because th- this is a this is a minorly controversial point, and this is something that I think a lot of people have a concern about. That I think you can't really argue against fully, which is that there is a lot, and I do mean a lot mm-hmm. of work being done to use AI to create material that is not safe for work. Yes, and. There was a big controversy with uh, Stability AI recently when they came out with uh, Stable Diffusion 2.0 when they ixnayed all of that from their model Mm -hmm. because they didn't they didn't train it on anything that was nude or super gory or anything like that. So the question is, should we or shouldn't we be doing that? I mean, that's that's going into a whole ethics discussion. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, that, 
that's something that needs to come up. It's a conversation on capitalism at that point. I mean. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think a, a <laughs> yeah, lot think of so. the gripes that people have with AI, because a, a lot of the stuff with like AI art and AI kind of encroaching into creative space, it's very controversial. I mean, you, you see the discourse on Twitter and YouTube. There's a lot of very angry people, and uh, their anger is justified. I mean, they they're it's something that they you know, spent years honing their craft and all of a sudden all this uh, mm. stuff comes mm. along that kind of, I mean, a lot of it is advertised as like, oh, we're going to replace you or supplant you or whatever. And, and I, and I see that. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if you want to go down <clears throat> that discussion it, and, and to clarify kind of my whole stance on it. I, I watched a lot of videos where it was very, I wanted to see both sides of the argument. So I'm, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here. Uh, well, and TJ, like another thing that I've been seeing people get really pissed about is um, yeah, voice cloning. Yes, that's what. And that's why I say yeah. it's creative fields in general, and not just art, but also well, they're they're voice. really worried about like voice cloning getting good enough to where people mm -hmm. say things that they would never say, and then they get attacked for it. And how do you there. feel about that? It's already there. Drills? Yeah, it's already there. Well, before we get to that, Tristan, I just wanted to let you know that. I'm really horny right now and was wondering if you'd be up for some hot, steamy sex later on tonight. Are you kidding? Why didn't you ask me earlier? I've had blue balls all day and I need to unload my Alfredo sauce. Stop saying you'll fuck me and fuck me already. I hope you like vegan sauce. Uh, I call top. Damn it. Why are you always the top? Yeah. Just... Well, here's the thing, though. Well, it's like, not perfect, okay, though. Like, you... it's... No, guys. Guys, you, uh, you, uh, the, the handsome men on this podcast... We can all still pretty tell. Like we can tell mm -hmm. at this point. I think when when you hear something from Uber Duck, it's, it's to us techie people. It's still pretty obvious. You're giving me too but, much credit, Lars. I'm dumb as hell. Yeah, but but also, <laughs> but my point was that okay. Well, not just is that we're we're kind of a bit the, beyond the, the, what they were doing with Uber Duck, though. We are. Yeah, exactly. The tech the tech has moved beyond that at this point. But what I was saying is that um. The point of it fooling people mm -hmm. was well before AI at that point. Like it's like it, the, the idea of deceiving other people and pretending that you're someone that you're not or releasing pictures that depict someone that isn't actually there. I mean, that's that's a story as old as time. And, and that's been a thing since Photoshop has been around. So, I mean, if a sucker is going to believe it, well, voice is a it. different level, though. Mm -hmm. Voice is something that, like, historically, we, we don't really have a lot of experience with. That's like, true. Like, Photoshop, sure. Like, that's been in, in the culture for a long time, right? You see a photo and, like, just right off the rip, you're a bit skeptical when you see it, right? But voice, it's mm -hmm. something that we've always just, like, right off the bat trust. And so, like, there's a new, there's going to have to be a cultural shift where, like, we start to realize that voice is now no different than looking at a photo and wondering, is this photoshopped or is it not, you know? Because mm -hmm. if you watch the the presidential uh, game stream channel, it's really entertaining. <laughs> if if you just show that to any random person, they would not. The first thing to come to their mind would not be this AI generated voices. They would yeah. be probably a little skeptical on like how this came about. But that would not be the first thing that came mm -hmm. to their mind. Another like personal thing that I've noticed in my life when it comes to AI is my fiance has been talking to like these chatbots a lot. To the point where, like, she gets so deep in, like, philosophical conversations with them that I'm like, hey, remember, like, this is just a robot. Please don't uh -huh. use it to replace social connections. And she's just like, eh, I'm, I'm fine with just the robot. And I'm like, okay. That's the scary part. That is 100% the scariest part about all of this. So that It's just the reliance, the trust in the bot. And my, my biggest gripe with ChatGPT is that it just takes authority on, like, no matter what you ask, even if it doesn't know. And I, I think that is a huge issue. Oh, yeah. Because most people who engage with this technology is not going to understand, like, how the AI works, right? Like, they're using this as if it's Google. Like, it's a better Google. Yeah. But there's a difference. And there that's not communicating. It's, it's very, very scary, I think. Because the... It's interesting to... Ch Chat B GPT and Bard have been known to make stuff up completely. Like, just completely make up shit and it's dangerous that people think that the AI is always a hundred percent right, but yeah. it will just, if it doesn't know, it will just come up with something that isn't true. I personally think it, that we're going to see an up an uptick in AI just taking over social connections in general as it gets better. Mm -hmm. 
I think I honestly think the scarier part than that is is AI taking up <clears throat> just like facts in in you know just just stats. Like if there's someone who let's say is a popular TikTok, I don't have high regards for TikTok creators. Okay, <laughs> popular TikTok uh, creators like I want to learn this thing. Give me some fun facts about blah 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 blah. They ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT spits it out. Incorrect. They're just infactual, right? But they have, you know, millions of followers and they just regurgitate this to their followers. And now this is in the zeitgeist. This infactual information, now everyone is repeating it, right? And and at a mass scale, I think that could become really fucking bad. <laughs> and I I've actually been seeing that happen a lot on TikTok as of late already. And there have the TikTok is trying to combat it with filters saying this is not factual or other yeah, things. Yeah, that's and it's it's, it, it's it's concerning that Google and Microsoft are trying to integrate chatbots into their search engines. Wait, concerning. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Google's search engine's been going down the tank with how it doesn't even give you accurate search results. It just pushes ads and uh, SEO spam. Ah, dog. And now they want to. They want to integrate. Yeah. TJ, just you. You block Origin. Just. I'm just saying. I'm just like the average person's not gonna know. Oh, I oh I know. I'm just saying well, you should def you should definitely download that. But I, I don't know why you haven't. Since That's... I am the average person, I have a very important yeah. question for Jabril's. Mm-hmm. Hit me, hit me. Uh, can you help me file my taxes? Ooh, <laughs> no. Um, but uh, Chat GPT can. Really? Like if I feed Chat GPT my social security number to file <laughs> taxes, is that a good well, idea? Well, why don't you try? Why, well, maybe well, you, you know. Can. I seen an interesting, uh, I think it was a tweet. Someone inputted their like social security number and their full name and asked ChatGPT to find some money for them. And evidently it did. I don't know if it was fake or not, but it, it was interesting. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of things you, you can do with that right now, by the way. Like you can, the, the, the main meta at the moment, which is going to be out of, out of date by the time this gets released, uh -huh. is um, asking ChatGPT to act like a, a professional of some sort. And then it can do a lot of stuff. And this is a little, this is a little bit lower than the controversy. This is just some of the more baseline things. Like you can ask it to do your Excel work for you. You can ask for it to, to make you a prompt for mid journey or stable diffusion. You can, you can ask it for like, just like a summary of a of, of vaporwave. If you wanted to get into the genre, you can, you can see what, what people think is Wait, could it give casual me, like, for it's, people in there. It is very useful. 20s. Uh, for helping you make outlines and things like that if you're yeah. writing an essay or you're putting a video together it helps you organize your ideas. Oh, that, that, that gives me that gives me like a reminder of a funny story I did back in high school. This mm -hmm. was I think the year uh, it was about 2015 maybe and I used this really 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 shitty website to generate like an essay about um, Ronald Reagan for school because I didn't feel like writing it and it was the deadline was about up and and I just touched up like the the punctuation and grammar mistakes, and I got like a, a B minus on the on the essay. Well, you're a pioneer. You got in on that early because yeah. now a lot of kids now use Chat GPT to cheat on exams and write essays for them. So that that makes me <laughs> that makes me <laughs> happy that I pioneered on cheating with AI. Yeah. By the way, what uh, what was the name of the school that you went to, and uh, what was your teacher? Because uh, um... They should probably know about this. Uh, I played the fifth. Okay. Yeah, let's revoke that. Yeah, oh, I don't know, man. Do <laughs> I played the fifth. Actually, I was before high school. You don't play the fifth. Too. You just admitted to it on air. What, what are you it talking was, about? It was. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I have. I know how to get out of this. I didn't do it in high school. I did it in um, Minecraft. Wait, you can't say that anymore. Seventh that work. grade, or sixth or seventh grade. Oh, okay. So I wasn't in high school yet. And I did it allegedly. Okay. If you, uh, if you took this to the, it, its extreme, wouldn't that be kind of concerning if you have people hypothetically getting, let's say, a medical degree by not even studying at all and just using chat GPT to do, you know, answer all their whoa, tests? Whoa, 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 whoa. You're implying like that. Like th that I did something well, like that. I would never do that. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so, the, uh, they become a doctor well, and they don't, they don't uh, know... What, they don't know Ooh. anything about it. Oh, TJ. Oh, I, I mean, I, I no, well, it sounds like ahead, you had something to say too, but I'll, I'll just interject real quick. TJ, you should 
probably look into how many doctors just go Google stuff because they don't actually know all that. And and it's actually nice to have this stuff out there as a compendium. Um, <laughs> no, I, I know. I'm just, okay. I'm just saying. I'm go just ahead, Jabril. Push, you're, I'm you're our guest. Of, I should, I should let you. Yeah. Uh huh. No, I was just gonna reply and say that. Uh, in terms of practices, right? Like that stuff easily will sort itself out because if like a doctor doesn't really have the education, the knowledge to perform surgeries and whatnot, mm -hmm. they're gonna be sued out of practice yeah. like oh, yeah. pretty quickly. There's always um, that one patient though. But <laughs> uh, true. I mean, true. oh shit, what he got it? lobotomized. What was it? I mean, Spaghetti-O, you just said you're uh, getting some surgery on that, that brain floating, right? Yep. <laughs> it's you, my boy. Um, I guess it's I'm not going to be able to see you guys next week. All right. Um, uh, oh. Uh, yeah. Here's another thing, by the way, which is that there is something that people are not taking advantage of, which is that this AI has potential for a lot of comedy. And TJ knows a thing or two about this because he... He seems to like to generate these videos of celebrities boxing and, you know, jerking each other's ding dongs and stuff. Well, I I only just recently started you. I only started using it yesterday. Uh, yeah. Where uh, because you showed me the the video of uh, where somebody generated Will Smith eating spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Classic. I, that is going to go down in the history books. But here's here's the question: Do you think that there might be kind of a this era of AI might be the vaporwave era, and people will look back on this fondly as kind of quaint, like it kind of like this is our equivalent to the '90s uh, PlayStation kind of stuff, where it's like it's it's not really that great yet, but it's 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 gonna have its charm, hmm. and we're gonna look back when it's like uh, um, 900 giga doinks going through our our, our uh, computers at all times, and you know. Oh, you need to get nostalgic for like the the old school jam. Yeah. Well, I mean, I already. I already could have a comparison to that because I feel nostalgic for like 07 internet mm -hmm. and I would wait for like America online to take its sweet ass time to load mm -hmm. and just how quaint like websites were back then and the amount of misinformation that was on like the wild west internet. Oh, that's a good, that's a good yeah, point. That's actually, you saw about like, uh, back when Lara Croft had triangle yeah. tits. <laughs> I, I don't know what what, yeah. what do you think is the triangle tits of this era? Maybe the hands, I would say. Definitely, definitely, um, the really weird teeth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or the extra fingers. Yeah, I was gonna say though, there there is a potential for 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 comedy at the moment. And uh, guys, if you if you're listening to this and you haven't joined us live at Discord at one podcast dot com, if you want to tune to these episodes live, you should go to Chat GPT and just ask it to like be funny because that's something we don't do to, to other people because it's weird. Oh my, oh my gosh that's a brilliant video idea for me to do with Jabril's. Jabril's let's just ask AI to tell jokes for us and see if we laugh. Yeah I know that sounds I know that sounds weird but if if, if you're uncomfortable with the thought um, of because you're used to not going down that trail with humans like mm -hmm. oh you're a comedian uh, why don't you tell a joke um, no chat GPT will, will gladly tell you tell you jokes and stuff and it, it's it's really funny um i like to tell it to like write me reviews and and summaries of things from the perspective of someone who's distracted because they think they left their sink on and it, it's really <laughs> really <laughs> really <laughs> like, maybe i should have i should have i should have spiced up how it made that that uh that intro i try to attempt mm. to do Jabril's, it sounded really it, intro it sounded really it sounded really generic hey, and hey, lame. <laughs> like I did not like it. It's never too late. I'm still here, baby. Yeah, yeah do Jabril's uh, intro, well, but hey. you're taking a shit. Uh, <laughs> do you want, do you want uh, TJ? I, I do you want me to give you life raft here? I can. I can actually um, make the uh, intro funnier. Do you want? Do you want me to? Do you want me to 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 do what? I, I can give you the the thing to read that I had generated before, if you'd like. Okay. I want to comment real okay. quick. Oh, you you generate you generate something. Okay, I want to comment real quick, Lars, to your uh, question about if we're in the uh, nostalgic era or what's going to be nostalgic about this AI era. Honestly, if I'm being truthful, yeah, I don't think that we have hit that era yet. I don't think it's came. I feel mm -hmm. like this technology is going to continue to get better and better and better. Okay. And with that, it's going to get more expensive to use. And like, I think right now we're in a sweet spot where it's like not too expensive, but yeah, just the right price. 
And in this era, we're going to create a lot of like different content yeah. that you will not be able to generate easily in the future due to like pricing and the gatekeeping and all that stuff. Because you do, you do have all the yeah, memes um, that are AI generated, like the gamer presidents, right? right. Or like uh, all the, the memes. The, currently, the new hot thing. It, well, this might be out of date by the time this comes up. But the Balenciaga memes. Mm -hmm. Have you seen those? Yep. Like Harry Potter as Balenciaga yep. models. Uh, nothing forever. Like all these things. I think it's going to be the nostalgic era over time. Yeah. By the way, speaking of pricing, I'll let me let me see what I can pull up here. Um. So I have I have used an extensive amount of chat GPT and let's see how much I have used. Talking about the API? Um yeah, I have used mm -hmm. five cents. <laughs> it has cost me five cents. <laughs> it is it is like what like I, I think it's like uh point zero two two cents per like a thousand tokens. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's not very expensive to run it now. So but, I mean, but have you're you right seen that that's the price to use ChatGPT? I'm sorry, GPT four though. <laughs> have you looked at that price? <laughs> it's no, and yeah. And let's see. Uh, there's a there's a loophole for that, by the way, where you can use a plugin to to access it via stable diffusion mm -hmm. and um, get uh, you, uh, uh, special access to four without paying for Yo, it. Yo, am I the uh, only one who has trouble saying see. just GPT without adding chat to it? Allegedly, am I the only one? What GPT? Like I want to say, I want to say GPT four, but I always say like Chat GPT four. It's so frustrating. Oh, it's just a habit at this point. Just think yeah. of it as Giga nice. Piss Turd. And I got GPT six, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or it's actually, uh, it's GIF and not GIF. Is, mm -hmm. is this like that Richard Stallman thing where it's like it's actually GNU Linux or, or yeah? By the way, uh, look, it's actually YIF. I I looked up uh, the the price. By the way, it's it's saying here twenty bucks a month. That's not. I mean, for the plus, that's not bad. No, not for plus. I'm saying the API for oh, four. So Lars, oh, okay. Lars, what did you do to make the, the prompt funnier? Because I, I have chat, chat GPT pulled up on my phone. Oh, literally just, just tell it to. It's it like I said, it's not like a human. You can literally just tell tell me uh say it, but do it in like a like a funny way or do it in a way that is gonna make someone laugh. Like it, it knows how to do that. Okay. I, it, it's really weird. I'll do the. That's something that I think is actually really cool about AI, which I, I, I feel like we kind of sleep on a lot, by the way, mm -hmm. which is that it can do a couple things that we physically just lit. Just it's, it's not actually something we are technically capable of. And one of them is um, being funny on command, which is awesome. But the other one is the concept of the, negative prompt mm. which is the coolest thing i think over the last five years that i've seen which is the idea that when you are trying to generate an ai image you can tell it what to not look for oh yeah which is nuts like that's something that's something that our feeble little piss brains can't handle at all because we don't so need it just, right like if you yeah. well, if speaking you, of like feeble little piss brains mm -hmm. i had a i had a very important question for jabril's oh good Wait, are you calling him that or you? Me, me. Oh, me. okay. I was gonna say rude. Now, let me let me adjust my glasses. Does Tic Tac steal my Wi-Fi? I think my bill's going up. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, always. Oh, okay. Then we should definitely ban that that website. Yeah, I, I agree, Mister Senator. Thank you, Mister uh, J Jibriles. Thank, thank you, sir. Close enough. Thank you. It's just GPT, trust it, not chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> chat GPT.t1podcast.com. I don't know. Damn it, I did I said chat before it. <laughs> See what I mean? Oh my gosh, he's right. Oh, dude. Uh Jabril, it, it says I am looking up the API costs. It's 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 three cents for every thousand tokens. That's still not much. This is still I mean comparatively, that's what times what a hundred times or something like that? So if you use this like once a day, it costs you like a dollar in like a year. Sure. But at scale, though, at scale, like you, you can't oh, do anything yeah. at scale and comparatively. Yeah, but right. from my experience, like four is not that different from three. I think that it can maybe like remember conversations longer. But from my experiences, it, is, it hasn't been that like much of an improvement. So I kind of disagree, I think. But I can see where you're coming from. But the, the, to get into that, we'd have to get really technical and dorky. And I think we've. We've gone far enough. According to my calculations, calculations, 
A Chet GPT four is uh, actually is a uh, is is four the one that's that lets you be able to uh, use other inputs besides text like images or is yeah, that you could, a future one? Well, four well because four is the one where you can feed it an image and and you can gen- but the the thing ab- about uh, three is that it was it had that weird cutoff in two thousand twenty one where it, it just didn't know anything after that. So it's like once the r- hit, that was it for. Like their knowledge. Oh, he said the funny virus word. No monetization. Can you still Wait, not say there's that? An interface, there's an interface where you can feed images to GPT-4. I believe so. I yeah. If I'd so I need to I need to know ASAP. This oh. sounds amazing. Let me look it up. Uh, for the yeah, you look it up. For one of our previous episodes, I want to make a disclaimer. Uh, we said that the the process of making meth and Breaking Bad was fictional. I guess it. Oh was not. yeah, Chat. G- G- sorry, GPT. There we go. Hey <laughs> oh. Oh, but hold so on a second. I generated two no, he's, intros. He's issuing a correction to, to new to our audience intros we, we, for the podcast. They're gonna fact check. Fact check. Fact check. Fact check. Okay. Fact, check. <laughs> fact check. Everything we say. Um. Yeah. It turns out that the recipe for methamphetamine on Breaking Bad is uh, true. Uh, Tristan found that out this weekend. I'm not exactly sure how. Um. But yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. You tell me Netflix can in- upload proper instructions to make meth, but I can't on YouTube. This is an outrage. Susan, wait, she's not here anymore. Well, I mean, do you own YouTube? Uh, yes, I do. You didn't know this? Oh well, then I yeah, this is an outrage. That's the reason why you have me on. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're telling me, Lars, is I can go make blue candy meth rocks in well, my kitchen. I mean, the, uh, if you want me to explain the show that you've seen, back to you. Um. The the reason they did that is because they didn't have access to the regular ingredients, so they had to make old school biker meth. <laughs> you know that you know that blue meth isn't pure meth, yeah. right? Like pure meth is white. Oh wow, TJ if, if talking blue, about how white it, is pure. Wow, so TJ, it's... you're really uh Wow. Well if if your meth is blue, we it has go one episode in without you being mm-hmm. racist. Damn. Are you like a white nationalist now? Yeah. This is the audio podcast. This is the most ridiculous thing you could say to an African American yeah, like, ever. Yeah, I'm like, so, I'm like, yeah, uh, wow. well, no, you know, that's not actually all that ridiculous because you, you'd be describing Clan Disowens. <sighs> not to get political. Oh, I heard pol- politics. Yeah, let's I'm going to go let's take a nap. never go there, ever. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, Who yeah. did you vote for in the 2016 election? No, uh, Mickey Mouse. Last name business. First name Nanya. The dude that, the dude that dressed up like a wizard. Oh, Vermin Supreme. I voted for D's nuts. Whatever happened to that guy? Did, didn't he die? I don't know. What about the <laughs> rent is too damn high guy? Remember him? He was he was like a meme for a day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, J- Jabril's, what what have you been up to other than AI since you've last been on? What's what's been your jam? Um, so I uh, took up a project. Um, nice. started making a manga. Oh, it's something I've wanted to do for a really long time. I've always wanted to get more serious with storytelling um, because making content on my videos just wasn't it wasn't enough. So I started doing that. Little did I know (laughs) it takes up a lot of goddamn time. But uh, recently I I finally figured out a good groove, got a good team going. So they've, you know, they're able to automate things where I can have a little input. So I started working on the YouTube videos again. And uh, it's really exciting times, man. I'm, I'm really, really excited. And that's something that hasn't quite dropped yet, but you're getting to soon or? Yes, it should be out in about four to six weeks. I still have a couple more pages that we're, we're finding at the moment, but you can you can get early access by going to hacksword.io. Nice. nice. Hey, yo. Hey, uh, are you doing physical copies of the manga? Yes, yes, absolutely. Hey, hey. Hey Jabril's, uh, could I could you dap me up with a, a signed copy? Or you could pay for it like a normal person. And just yeah. Oh, oh no, I would okay. pay him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, add me. Um, I, I'm just saying, like, if I buy one, can I can I can I get that sure, signature? Of course. You know? Add me on Discord. Do you, could you? Yeah. Do you guys want to hear the intros I just generated? I think I already said yes, you actually. Uh, but let, let's talk about the manga oh, just for a little bit. I did just for a little bit. Let's 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 let that land. Oh, okay. Did you just the say manga? Manga. manga. Oh my! I love anime. Wait, J Rod. I have a controversial. <laughs> I say manga just because I know people hate it. I, and they I comment. do that with. I do with. I do that with Pokemon. Like it's, po- Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah, that's yeah. 
This pick Poke yeah, my mom. Chris has been playing Pikmin on his stream. It's the same thing. You're right, TJ. Um, mm -hmm. So, can you give just a little bit of a teaser for if, if someone wanted to pick up this manga? Yeah, manga. What, sure. Uh, like a Gamesh, what would they? Uh, what would they be in for? Sure. So, uh, the whole inspiration for this manga is I um Ugh. I consume like a good amount of anime. <laughs> I just recently started consuming manga. I, I probably should have mm. done that much earlier, but my biggest gripe is that like a lot of these stories are like the exact same and I don't know. Well, they're getting kind of dull and boring. I have my favorites obviously, but I I realize that like it's difficult for me to sit here and judge like these creators and their stories without actually like being able to do it myself. And so I decided that I am going to make the best story that I possibly can. And my story is about two young fellows who are born on a desolate planet. This planet doesn't have a lot of resources, not a lot of things going on, but they live in a galaxy full of like exciting adventures and really cool stuff happening. And so they're on a quest, they're on a mission to do whatever it takes to get off this planet so they can like become something and make something out of their lives. Um, but due to the circumstances that they're in, they are faced against many challenges, one of which is they have to resort to crime in order to make money. So there's like police uh, force that are on their head. Uh, they are, have rival factions that also don't like them. So they have to contend with that as well. And uh, it's, a, it's a good time. It's a, it's a romp. It's a rave. And uh, the, I worked incredibly hard on the power system. It's a shonen manga um, with a really touching story. Xword.io. Man, I cannot wait to read the Star yeah, Wars book. It's inspired by Star Wars. I'm, I'm not going to front. I'm not going to front. By the way, I have a, I have a, a question. <laughs> and you're going to hate me for saying this, but I'm going to... If people like JoJo, is this is this something that's going to be up there, Ellie? Because we got a lot of we got a lot of JoJo people on the server. Is this... Do you, is there going to be any overlap there? I watched JoJo the first season. I think I got like halfway through and I, I couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry, oh. first podcast fans. I'm sorry. Thank you. Hold on. JoJo Hold on. is so Hold on. Ugh. Hold on. <laughs> so the first the first season is very different from the rest of the show. Well, the f you, you have to that. make it through uh, six seasons, uh, guys. Uh, <laughs> then it starts to get no. It picks really up in the you have to it, make it, it through up in the second 42 season. episodes before it gets Listen, good. Listen, I've been down like, this road before. People said the same thing about Hunter Hunter, and I'm still I'm still searching. I'm on episode forty or something. Okay. No, it's not that extreme. I'm saying like season two is where it picks up. Like the first one, it just gives you a basis of the Joe Star family, and there be you just have to watch four movies first, and then the fifth well, one's good. Or Some people say to skip the first season entirely. You know what, man? But I I would disagree. You know what, man? The Russian Badger said it on his episode, and as someone who likes the first two seasons, especially this the first season, I can see what he's coming from. Okay, because because for, for okay for the audience. Uh, Jojo is this anime that anime that's that's based on the uh, idea that um, mm -hmm. uh, you have this thing called a stand and it, it, the stand is basically so it's a part three. It, yeah. So it's basically like kind of like a like a personal Pokemon in some ways, but it's like more metaphysical. But the thing is that for the first two seasons, they just don't have them. I feel like if Atch Ketchum didn't catch Pikachu until like season five. So it's kind of weird. So I think our uh, Araki didn't uh, come up with that idea until part three. Yeah. I mean, this is exactly my. This is exactly the, the, my, the my whole point, right? Is that like nothing against JoJo? If you like JoJo, yeah. whatever. You like One Piece, yeah. whatever. You like Hunter, whatever. But I, I have been tired of like watching these anime where like time and time and time again I hear like, oh no, you, you just gotta watch like the first season. After the first season gets so good, you know. I'm so tired of that. Why not craft a story that from start to finish is good? Oh, absolutely. Why not? I understand a bit after doing research why, because Japanese like business works very different than US business, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I'm throwing my hat into the ring. I want you all to read my story and just give me truth. If my shit is ass, tell me it's ass. If it's good, tell me it's ass. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Also, by the way, Lars, I think uh, with what if my story's also, good, tell me it's ass. Sucks, by the way, uh, just give it a couple more seasons. It'll, it'll pick up. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I was gonna when you mentioned the hey, Jabril's when you uh, mentioned what 
bad what Badger said about skipping the first two parts, I was gonna say, well, Sea Dog VA would have a like to have a discussion with him because he's like a big JoJo. Fan. Okay, so y- y- no, but hey, if I'm if I'm like a huge JoJo fan and I can recognize why yeah. people skip the first two for very obvious reasons, no, that's a that's a totally valid strategy. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, the the first season with the. You know the where it's in like a Victorian like London thing, and it's very dramatic and just not. It's good. It's good in a a meme way, but it's not. It's not quality programming. And then and then number two is fun, but it's it's still Ash with a Pikachu. I get it. I will say this, Jibril. Yeah, I'm listening. I I have a very simple proposition for you. Okay. Okay. All ears. At some point, let's say it's a rainy day. Yes. In the future, and you're sitting there, and you're thinking to yourself, "You know what, man? That art from JoJo's pretty cool. What if I watched one episode of season three? And if I if I don't like it, I don't like it. But if I do, I do. Would you allow that thought to continue at that point? I think so, only because it's my understanding that JoJo resets the protagonist like every season or something. Yeah, and that well, sounds. Yeah. It's the Joe Star family. Yeah, it's it's their yeah. it's their whole it's the whole Joe the Joe Star family. It's, it's like, like a Doctor different Who, but not mem- kinda, like it's, it's yeah. It's that the aspect way. sounds it sounds assess- accessible. Like the first season, it it is. Season two is like it's the son, no, no, the grandson mm-hmm. of the protagonist of the first one, and then the third one is the son of the you know. It's like like you you see the Joe Star ancestors. Thomas, it's like a really good show, guys. Basically, it, but. Uh, you, you just have um, to learn a lot about their genius. Yeah, know, season five. Oh I my do gosh. Get, I, I do get what you mean because there is a lot of um, shown in anime yeah. that has a lot of filler and people make lists of episodes where you can skip because you, you do Naruto. encounter that with One Piece. I mean, the classic one, like like Dragon Mostly Ball Z filler. is very much like there's tons and tons of filler, which is why there are people that prefer Dragon Ball Z mm. Kai, which they just cut all the filter out. The filler Pokemon out. Pokemon does that too. Yeah. There's a lot of... Uh, Stuff in the Pokemon original original DBZ where they're just like, oh, Goku and Piccolo, uh, go get their driver's licenses, and it's like a yep. whole episode where they're just driving cars. I find cars. that kind of quaint, though. So. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I just didn't like. Yeah, because like I think well, filler does have a purpose because then you kind of bond. Yeah, but in a way that doesn't matter, and bit. there aren't any stakes I don't at know. all. I like no low stakes, but I I don't want to watch an episode yeah. of Pokemon where Ash is like, and I'm Bucky. And you gotta defeat me in this forest, <laughs> and you're never gonna you're here for me again. And that's like the premise of the episode, and then and then he doesn't defeat them, but still gets the badge anyway. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Did he, yeah. And it takes him twenty it takes years, him twenty to years to be ten years old. Yeah. yeah, when I was a kid, man, <laughs> I, I think I, I think I beat it in like three months. So just saying, you know, I should have got on that. Ooh, yeah, it's very. We're actually we live in a post Ash era now. We, we do. That's like the fucked end of the story. Up. That's I, yeah, I don't, don't want to hear man? that. I don't want to hear yeah, that. Why'd you why'd you say here, that one? Too it's true. We live in the future now. The new uh, the new it's protagonists too- are among us. No, no, I've stopped thinking that. No, <gasps> I, us? I noticed that the other day. By the way, it's the, I, I heard the words "among us" and it didn't didn't phase me. Just I. You wow, ever you're see old. that? You're you ever see that now. clip where? Yeah, man. Sus. You ever see that clip with all the the shroomish, and then James from Team Rocket says, "There's a fungus among us." And then because people he just, said the thing, like Bart, yeah, it's funny. Some for yep. you, yeah. Well, just people <laughs> post it because he says among us. Yeah, I'm sure they did. That was yeah. Oh, uh, who's worse, uh, nine year olds uh, talking about Among Us or JoJo fans or Lars talking about Among Us? Uh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh. <laughs> I hate this show. Uh, sorry, by the way, I was going to say, is there anything else you really want to plug? But yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. People check out the. I'll I'll mm-hmm. I'll, I'll throw him a bone. The manga that's coming out. Manga, manga. I actually had a question about the the manga you're dropping. Please, are you going to make a PDF of it as well? Yes, I'm going to do a digital version and a physical version. Oh, good. Ooh, okay, that. That's exciting because then it'd be cool to potentially stream like a reading of it. Oh, that's a good idea. I, I'd appreciate that. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe we could even have Jabril's just show up in the stream and he shits on us for our voices. Have, yeah. <sighs> have him voice like one character that's just like a side person, just as like a sneaky cameo or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. mm-hmm. 
<laughs> we'll have Jabril's voice like the character that appears on one page. Yeah. I get to do the, so, the the microphone beeps and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, uh, do you want me to do the two intros I generated? Oh. I have I made two of them. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We were sleeping on that. I forgot that you had the 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 gimmick. Go go for it. Yeah. So the first one is I just told it to do the same. I gave it the same prop, but then it said make it funny. Mm-hmm. So first one is welcome, dear listeners, to the first podcast, the show with where three guys with questionable senses of humor talk about everything and nothing at the same time. Our hosts, Tej, Lars from Norway, and Spiro may not be experts in anything, but they sure know how to make a fool of themselves in front of a microphone. And if that's not enough to convince you to stick around, today's episode features a guest who is actually intelligent, computer science YouTuber Jabrils. We'll be diving into the topic of AI, and Jabrils will hopefully educate us enough so that we don't sound like complete idiots. But let's be real, we probably will anyway, so sit back, relax, and prepare to laugh at our futile attempts to understand the complexities of AI. Wow, fuck I can just you. hear like a... Yeah, it's just insulting I us. I can just hear like a Kevin McCloud <laughs> song playing in the background of that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I <laughs> then, dodged all bullets, so I'm happy. Mm-hmm. So then I, I had to generate another... Uh, well, because you took a shotgun a to our faces prompt. for that. That's why you didn't uh, catch any, but yeah. <laughs> I generated one of the different prompts, so I want you to guess what the prompt is. Uh, either, so. either it's someone who forgot to turn off the stove, or... Boom. Here. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of our podcast where we talk about everything under the sun, except for the ingredients of popular food items. Today, we have our beloved host, Tristan, joining us, who has a keen interest in meat-based delicacies. In the last episode, uh. Tristan made us all laugh when he revealed that he thought buffalo wings were made of actual buffalo meat. Oh, we couldn't yeah. help but imagine him biting into a juicy buffalo wing and thinking, hmm, this tastes like noth- nothing like bison. But that's not all. Tristan also believed for the longest time that hot dogs were made of dog meat. No, I sure did not! If, well, we're not sure if he's ever eaten one since he found out the truth. But don't worry, <laughs> folks, we're not here to judge. We, can't, we just can't wait to see what other food misconceptions Tristan has in store for us <laughs> So today. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and join us as we dive into some hilarious food-related discussions. And for context, uh, Tristan I'm- found out last <laughs> week that buffalo wings were not made out of buffalo. So... I didn't find out last week. I just told the story. Trusting. So the the prompt was a uh, do a podcast intro where you make fun of Tristan thinking that buffalo rings are made of buffalo <laughs> meat, and then make a joke about him thinking hot dogs are made of dog meat. That's trusting. <laughs> By the way, that Come that on. was that was pretty good. Consider- like, Jabril's. I've I've never had actual buffalo wings. Well, yeah, because he's, you know, he's 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 vegan. <sighs> He's been vegan his entire yeah. life. He never had vegan buffalo wings made out of vegan buffaloes? Yeah. That's not a fucking thing! <laughs> Didn't you have them at Buffalo Wild Wings? Those were made out of cauliflower! Oh, uh, what That's the fuck, buffalo That's wings. vegan buffalo. Uh, I... You guys <laughs> make uh, cauliflower you know what? No. too many things, man. No. Yes. Uh, I, I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> Jabril's, it was nice meeting you. I can't wait to read your manga. Thank you, I love you. <laughs> Love you too, man. Mwah. Okay. Mwah. We're friends on Discord now, so yeah, we can bug each other. Oh, um, yep. I think I think I already added you, Javils, but I, I I am interested in that that yeah. that, uh, that that manga. Um, I would I would be interested to see what you come out with as a content creator that I enjoy. And uh, if if people are listening to mm-hmm. this and they want to check out your content because they may enjoy it, mm-hmm. what's the best way to do that? You can go to youtube.com slash at Jabril's mm-hmm. J A B R I L S. I got a slew of videos on the way. Uh, I'm in the middle of a shit show. <laughs> so my yeah. content is a little delayed at the moment, but yeah, I got a, I got a brigade of content coming soon, mostly AI uh, related. So, mm-hmm. and by the way, if you guys go on his channel and you see that it, it seems to be kind of, um, it looks kind of stonks y. With with the the icons and the and the um the banner and everything, D- don't worry about that. It's he, he does great stuff. Um, go ahead and listen. Wait, to... Wait, what am I missing? What's up? What am I missing? You said stonks. Yeah, you got you got some um very very meme uh branding on your channel at the moment. <laughs> I forgot I said that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you might want to change that back. <laughs> 
If you wait, <laughs> tell me why. Give me a reason why. Oh. I kind of, I kind of like the fact you hate it. No, no, no. If it's funny, keep it. I'm just like, like the idea that you, that you thought you forgot that you did that one night while you were like drunk or something. It's a very <laughs> funny concept, but yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Also, guys, go ahead and check out. Uh, this will be good. Go listen to Jabril's last episode of the podcast because you can see someone being absolutely right about everything for an hour straight and uh go ahead and uh, feed his ego so <laughs> damn you should tell that to my girlfriend D- I, I will get, dap me up i'll give her i'll give her a piece of my mind Ooh, okay i don't okay uh he only <laughs> daps me up all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are being weird uh spaghetto mm. yeah hmm uh spaghetto Tristan. Yo. <laughs> yes, like I, I thought you were like going to follow that up. <laughs> hey, idiot. <laughs> okay. Yes, TJ. Hey, what? Idiot. Uh, idiot. Say, idiot. Idiot. Say what? What? <laughs> oh wow. Huh? <laughs> what? God, I'm good. <laughs> what I miss? I'm good. Okay, spaghetto. I, I'm trying to do you a favor, man. You just started releasing. Okay, you. Uh, Tristan's coming out with new videos now. Hey, hey guys, he's he's back. Um. He, he he's dropping some doki videos he's dropping some dark soul videos he's dropping some pikmin videos if you're into pokemon um go ahead and check that oh out my. how can they do that no shut up Flirt. okay if you guys want to like see my new content please check it out i have a video coming out later today as of uh the day of this recording about demon souls so when you finally see this video i'll probably have several of those videos out so please check them out they're pretty cool mm-hmm. if you want to see me get pissed off at things it's a pretty good game and I'm playing the remake too, so like, it's beautiful. Like, I love that game so much. So yeah, YouTube.com/spaghetto. Mm-hmm. Uh, check that out, please, and let me know what you think of the the new content. And Jabril's, what is your opinion on women? Wow. Um, I think that they are. That's a pretty good opinion. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Yeah, nice, uh, nice little cop out. Uh, let's see. Oh, TJ, do you want to shout out your music? <laughs> Thank you, 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 TJ, joining us today on the show. We had the honor of having TJ, the talented e- electronic musician, with us who <laughs> blessed our ears with his sick beats and groovy tunes. But before we before we go, we just wanted to remind you to. S- Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on all our social media platforms. Also, don't forget to check out Tej's music and give him a follow too. Was unless you're allergic to an it, outro it written from the perspective of the Pokemon <laughs> Rotom. And or what? What, what was he doing? And with that, there? we'll see you anyway, next time on our podcast. Okay. So we're we'll able guys. to talk.
Fuck you. Fuck you guys.